Welcome to the No Name Brand Podcast. My name is Sashka Hanarapal, actress, singer, dancer, turned brand marketing sales and advertising strategist who brands your soul. And each week I bring you an inspiring person or message to help you discover your undergod, turn up your leadership notches, challenge the status quo, because you're fast and furious with a powerful message to share with the world. Thank you for taking time out with me today. And without further ado, let's get our creative and wisdom juices below wall. Hello, 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 awesome creative visionaries. It's so good to have you back here with me today on the No Name Brand Podcast, where I invite inspiring and visionary guests from around the world around the world to share their thought leadership on entrepreneurship. Now, their world and business philosophy, and at the same time, because I'm all about putting knowledge into action, I want you to learn something new that you can implement today to be the change that you want to see and be in the world. Now, our next guest always wanted to be a princess. Pretty, appropriate seeing as though she's from the land of princesses, aka Egypt. To be exact, Alexandria. Now, as a kid, she made a promise to herself that one day she will live like a princess and will have everything she wants. And yep, what she's doing today isn't far off from that. Her first business idea was born out of seeing a need and filling it. Now, just like a princess, she's someone who cares for her community and people, and she's inspiring millions who think they aren't good enough to not only see, but become successful in all they do, and are, and she's watching them make their dreams come true through her worldwide travels and talks. Now, she currently teaches and has created, listen to this, over 50 online courses, 50, who hasn't even got one out? She's got 50 to over 30,000 entrepreneurs from 172 countries worldwide on Udemy. If you haven't heard of that, U-D-E-M-Y, go check it out. Freaking awesome. Enabling her to take her business idea from local to worldwide in 2015. Now she's a wife and a mama and started her entire business from scratch while taking care of her family and raising her son. Her blooper videos are hilarious, by the way. Every time I see her, I'm like, oh my God, she's got me in stitches because any mama can relate And when you're trying to do your videos and all the bloopers happen. And one of her craziest skills is, wait for it, being a pizza addict. Yes, that is a crazy skill. But listen, this mama had her own set of journeys to move through. Raised by her late grandma because her mom had to work in another country to finance her education and she would only see her once a year for a few days before she had to fly back to work where she had to work 16 hour shifts. Damn. She remembers seeing blisters on her mama's feet from standing too long. And whenever she had chance to spend time with her, her mom always reminded her and her sister that because she dropped out of college, she couldn't find a better job. And her desire was for her daughters to have a better future. Bless you, mama. Well, her future could not have been brighter when she passed her accounting our guest, with flying colors, but in her heart of hearts, she knew she was meant for more. Princess was calling. So, pregnant, freshly married, and a housewife, she started her own business, at first assisting with Facebook pages, group admin, and social media marketing. But she wanted the big dream. Dun, dun, dun. She wasn't going to let being a housewife from Egypt, Muslim, and hijabi define and feeling like an outsider define her. And then she saw the need and filled it. Yes! Now, just by recording a course for a client, she realized how she loved to teach. And she felt in her heart of hearts that if she loved this so much, then she could also fulfill it and teach others doing what she loves. And that she did. And the rest, as we say, is history, which we'll be delving into here on the show. So, without further ado, let's welcome Princess Ken Solomon. Hello, Kens. Hello. How are you? I'm 
great. Like listening to this introduction is out of this world. Thank you so much for all the kind words. It's a pleasure. You gave me some great stuff to work with. So I'm glad it was all good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, I'm very excited to have you here with us today because it's not often that we have someone that's actually putting courses together and teaching others how to put courses and teaching through courses and that you finally applied for the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to dive right in. And for those that are listening, we're going to be going to three different sections. So there's the entrepreneurship, there's philosophy, and there's education, because I'm all about putting knowledge into application. Otherwise, it just ferments and does nothing, people. So let's get to know Ken's. We're going to dive in. Udemy and teaching courses. What was the most difficult for you setting up your business then, which was 2011, and why as an entrepreneur? Well, when I started locally, the most, the most difficult thing was to see if my idea is going to work. Mm. I didn't have enough knowledge to validate my idea before I actually put it live. Back then, I didn't learn as much as I learned right now. I didn't have the resources that I have right now. So I had to go in fully blind, just put everything out there and see if it's going to work or not. Sorry, I have to interrupt. So what resources do you have now that you didn't have then? I can actually learn from more leaders in the industry right now. Ah. I have more printables that I can print and use right now. These things were like alien language to me when I was getting started. <laughs> like, no, sir, I had no clue what I was doing, but I just wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. So I went all in back then. And when I started locally, I didn't know there was actually someone out there who would love for me to help them with their social media and actually pay me for it, mm -hmm. especially in a community like Egypt, because I was starting locally. The philosophy and the idea of digital entrepreneurship in Egypt is not as strong as it should be yet. Mm -hmm. So to start something completely new, instead of trying to find a job like every other person in my community, was a little scary. And I had no blueprint to follow. And this is something that I remember. Now, every time I create a new course, I think of the people who are going to start it, that they need a blueprint. Yeah. Something I needed when I started and I couldn't find. Mm. I love that. And how did you find Udemy? Well, I was trying to find some free courses to start learning more about social media marketing. Oh, cool. And using the fancy schmancy Google search, I said, free social media courses, enter. <laughs> <laughs> so I found Udemy in the search results. And then I discovered that there are paid courses and free courses and that there are people who are generous enough to offer free coupons to join their paid courses. Mm. So I started taking a few courses in there and then I started investing in courses because I've been learning a lot from people. And then I had like, there's this, um, on the top right of the website, there's this become an instructor button. And I think it had like glitter around it or something. It was so mesmerizing to look at every time. <laughs> I really want to click you, but I'm very, very scared to click you. But I think one day I'm going to click you. So, yeah. Oh, that's a fit. And if you see Ken's social media post, you'll know that she loves glittery and shiny objects. And oh, yeah. <laughs> objects. <laughs> it was like, so I can imagine it was mesmerizing. Come to me, Ken. Yeah, click me. <laughs> so when did you finally click it? This was July 2015, it took a while, and it took a lot of learning, and I had almost hit rock bottom with my local business, I was in a very hard time, and I was trying to rebuild my old local business, and then I felt like, if you want to do something different, and if you've already lost everything that you've built in the past couple of years, that means it wasn't serving you enough, and it wasn't as strong as it should have been, like something that I can actually count on as a business. And it's not making me feel that I'm inspiring people enough mm. or helping people enough. So I thought, well, I'm going to click that button and see what exactly is required to teach on Udemy. And I was so scared that people are going to treat me bad just because I'm an outsider. And I kept telling myself, why would they leave all the gurus and great people that they're learning from and decide to learn from a housewife from Egypt? A hijab, you know, so I'm like, why? Who? would ever do that. Then I said, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to click that button. If something goes well, then great. I'm going to keep doing it. If nothing happens or something bad happens, well, I'm going to crawl back to whichever hole I came from 
and nobody's going to notice a thing, right? <laughs> I love that. You know, that's such an important thing about entrepreneurship is that there's a thing of the resilience and the tenacity in being an entrepreneur. So the local business wasn't, weren't bringing the results that you were wanting or desiring. And so many that have a lot of tenacity and resilience, they'll keep pushing through to make it work. But like you just said, after that, you said, but it wasn't making my heart sing. I wasn't having the impact. And that's the important ingredient that even though you're pushing through to remember that this is something that you really, really, really want to be doing, it makes your heart sing. Because if it doesn't, you just, oh man, what are you pushing through to? And that you had the courage then to go click that button and then go, yes, me, despite the fear, despite the fear. So what was the journey there? So you click the button, you fill in the form, and then you have to create videos, right? Yeah, I had to. So you had to expose yourself. (laughs) Yeah, the best thing I loved about it, and I still love about Udemy until now, because I was even too shy back then. I'm still a little shy, but not like before. I've learned a lot. And working online actually with people helped me a lot with my shyness. But one of the requirements is I don't have to be on camera to deliver my course. So I can create slides and voiceover. So for me, that was, oh, yeah. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. And the minimum requirement was only 30 minutes of video. So I said, well, I'll just talk as if I'm talking to my best friend. I'll record the slides. I'll put them out there. I'm going to see how things are going to go. And I published the first course. And back then, there was a person that I learned course creation from and posting to Udemy from. So he said that we have to offer some free coupons for people to join our paid courses to get people to see the course and maybe give us some good reviews before we start selling the course and actually charging for it. Cool. So he suggested that we create 5,000 coupons, 3,000 for 5,000 to get people in. So to me, that number was huge. Like, seriously, I don't think even there is one soul is going to join that course, (laughs) free or paid. But hey, I'm trying, so let's see. I said I'll create like maybe 500 coupons. Okay, let's be ambitious and make a thousand coupons. I did, and back then Udemy had the option that each new student join your course, they send you a separate email. So it was crazy. I had a very, very annoying beep kind of thing on my phone for each email. And I put that free coupon out there on a coupon saving site. And I went to sleep. And imagine 27 hours of 1,000 beeps on your phone. (laughs) Oh, my God. That is amazing. I felt like literally, this is not my life. This is a cartoon movie. I've watched too many cartoon movies. I can't. (laughs) I have mixed feelings between reality and imagination. Like, guys, are you serious? Did you actually join this? Hello? Have you seen me? (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, I would never, ever forget that moment. Every time I even feel down about my business right now, or I feel like I'm drained or I can't do this anymore. It happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. I keep remembering how I felt that moment. And God, it pushes me forward every single time. I love it. What was the first course? It was the power of hashtags. It's currently unavailable because I felt too ashamed after six or seven months. Like, I need to unpublish that. Now I'm becoming more professional. Let me unpublish that. (laughs) No. (laughs) No, you should leave it. That's wonderful. It's like people see what it was like in the beginning. I wanted to, but I always check if my courses are still up to date or not. Mm -hmm. And if I can't update them in a good way, I tend to archive them and create better ones. Yeah. Because I don't want to uh, confuse people to tell them old information and then show them an update video and then another update video. No, I tend to put everything to the archive and create fresh new information for people. Mm. And I actually enjoy doing that. (laughs) So you publish your course and you get these thousand pings and you're like, oh my freaking word. Okay. And then the power of hashtags. So how did you come up with the next content and the next course? And how did you know, you know, because Udemy is for everyone. So how are you niching down and the market and the language and branding and bringing that all into place? Was it all, did you suddenly go, oh my God, I need everything. How did you proceed from there to where you are now? I have to say, I was scared for a few days because 
<laughs> yeah, the first the first few days were horrible because I didn't get any feedback from people yet. Ooh. I didn't have people answering questions, like asking questions and the questions spread yet. Mm. So I thought maybe they just joined the course because it was free mm. instead of paying because it was on a limited free offer or something. But then people started leaving me reviews. Ooh. And I had a couple of students sending me, asking me if I have a course on affiliate marketing coming soon. And another one said, do you have any other courses about social media, maybe Facebook ads or something? So I didn't actually have enough knowledge or ways back then to survey all of the students who joined. So I decided to ask myself, if I am my student, mm. and I enjoyed that course, what would I need next? Mm. If I am me two years ago, what would I need to learn about? And I started listing a couple of titles for each thing that I know I have tried myself and I've tested myself and I made mistakes and I had things that worked because what I like to do is I don't teach theory. I like to have everything as a little case study. So I try something first, see what works and what doesn't and tell people the pros and cons of using that thing and then introduce them to it, show them how it works. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I listed a few ideas and started working on some of them. And after like my fourth course, I started surveying my students. What else do you want me to create? Come on, tell me. Whatever you want me to create, add it to the thread of the questions and I will try to find the ideas that I can actually help you with. Like I feel I'm, I have enough knowledge about it. Mm -hmm. And from then, things started taking off. Actually, by the beginning of 2016, that's around four months, I had my first 10,000 students. Wow. And it was unbelievable. <laughs> it took me 18 months since I started to reach over 10,000. And I reached 30,000 around nine months ago. Wow. And I still have a big goal. I have <laughs> like the, the most ambitious one. I want to reach 100,000 students by the end of 2020. I love it. I still have like doubts about it. But hey, I dreamed everything so far. And, and it can have, you know, thoughts become things. It's on my, tattooed on my arm. Where the focus goes, the energy goes. So I love that. For those of our listeners where they're going, well, I have a membership. I have my own membership. So would it be advantageous if I also had to, or I don't have to, but also doing something on Udemy that they also offer courses to get more clients or participants to come over to the membership? Is that also something that you teach? Well, I have a membership myself. <laughs> oh, well, there we go, people. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually built it like very recently. And I already have courses that are exclusive away from Udemy on my website. I also created those later, like a few years later. But the thing I love about Udemy is that it gives you a huge exposure. Mm. It puts you in a busy market of hungry learners, mm. people who actually need your help and people who would pay for your help, no matter how small or, or large, but they still actually need you. You know that there is a need out there. Mm. So even if you offer one course, you can later have people visit your website and buy your other stuff, but you can help those people as if you're creating another freebie. Mm. And you put it out there for people who you know are going to consume it and actually enjoy it. Love it. And when people give you reviews on your courses on Udemy, this is social proof. Social proof you don't have to fake or pay for or spend thousands on ads to get. So you're winning in a way and you're helping people. That's another win. I love that. So what I love about it and about all other course marketplaces, but Udemy, of course, is my baby. It's my favorite <laughs> <laughs> because I did try some other marketplaces, but my heart goes back to Udemy because it was my beginning and I would never forget that. So course marketplaces give you huge exposure to people who are ready to learn. You don't have to mm -hmm. prime them that much. It's, it's kind of a very ready market. Love Just it. show them your information and they are going to appreciate it. I love that. I think I signed up for Udemy as well to be an instructor. And then I had my videos, but they weren't light enough. So I was like, okay, I need to go and adjust them a little bit or something. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to redo the videos. I was like, oh, no. So, and then I, I forgot the, about it. <laughs> I know the struggle of the light of lighting the videos and stuff, but I tend to, to make all of my courses in slides because I think I thought for some reason that people don't have to see me. They have to focus on the content. And I have to say, I was kind of shy facing all the people. Oh. It wasn't easy for me to 
to think that there are going to be thousands of people actually watching this video and mm -hmm. maybe not all of them are going to be on the same level of acceptance so I was kind of hiding for, for a while when I created those courses, honestly. <laughs> but now it's different. I add like uh, introduction courses with myself on camera. Sometimes I do the promo video with myself on camera. I'm trying to get more and more not so camera shy. Good, because you're beautiful. It looks amazing. <laughs> you got so much energy. We want to see you on video. <laughs> but how did you ever come the first step to setting up yourself as a Udemy instructor? Because you had to click the button. So how did you... How did you overcome that step? I kept telling myself out loud, sitting on that desk saying, you have nothing to lose, you have nothing to lose, you have nothing mm. to lose, you have nothing to lose. So I was so scared, like so scared. Because when you are judged all your life, even in your smallest community, when people judge you on the smallest thing, you tend to think that the entire world is going to do so. And I have to say, I was surprised. Because when I met my first hater, it was like three years later. So three years of nice reviews and love from people and people sending me messages that they appreciated the content. And you're so energetic. We like your English. And I, the English thing, English is not my, my mother tongue. I speak Arabic. Mm -hmm. And my mom taught us how to speak English since we were five. She wanted to make sure that we have a better future. And wow. speaking another language is something that's going to help you for sure have a better future, especially when you're in a country and a community like Egypt. So I kept thinking people are going to make fun of me if I make a mistake when I'm talking in English. Like if I say ready instead of ready <laughs> or something like that, like the accent is going to be horrible. People are going to hate me. <laughs> the funny thing is you see those things, those fear turn into smoke. And you see the impact you do on people's lives, even with the smallest thing. Like I could tell myself, you want to teach them something new in 30 minutes. Okay, totally doable. But what if they watch for the 30 minutes and you hear like there are some crickets in their heads or something. They didn't understand anything. What are you going to do? And then I say, okay, let's try to focus on making things more simple, mm -hmm. more easy and set students' expectations that this is not going to be a fancy schmancy big course. This is going to be something quick to show mm -hmm. them one little piece of information that's going to help them have easier days later in their businesses. So okay. dealing with the fear and seeing each of, I still get afraid though. Like I still get fear. Good. <laughs> but, that's good. Exactly. Yes, it's very humbling. And but every time I see that fear becomes smoke. I imagine it as smoke flying around the room. It feels good. Mm. Like I enjoy it. Sometimes when I feel the fear, I smile because I know in a couple of days or a couple of weeks, I'm going to smile at this. I'm going to laugh at this. Oh, wow. Someone's going to come and show me that these things that I was scared of, they're not true. I love so that. Overcoming, clicking that button was just trying to confirm to myself every time that if this doesn't work for any reason, I'm going to close my account and leave. <laughs> no one is even going to remember me if I mess up because the marketplace is huge. It has thousands of instructors and millions of students. And this is so, so crowded, like Cairo at 2 p.m. or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the same. Oh, my. So what makes a good teacher on Udemy or for any online course? Well, here's the very fun part. Because I lived in a community uh, where bureaucracy is the boss of everything, oh. I thought that when you click that Become an Instructor button, they're going to ask you for certificates and privileges and things that you've done in your life that makes you a master of things. And I was so shook that all they wanted was that you have a good knowledge about something that you're ready to teach it to someone else. Oh, wow. The only requirement is that you record a test video show a little bit of your course, what are you willing to teach, and show it to their review team. And then each time you're about to publish a new course, it takes two to four days to be reviewed by the review team to make sure of the quality and the content and everything. And then once it's published, boom, it's in front of thousands of people. Wow. That is amazing. See, it's that easy, people. It's that easy. <laughs> now, you speak of four questions that can take your online business from starting and struggling to profitable, freeing, and thriving. You can find this on your website as well. So time management, they're four things. Time management, two, content, three, time, and four, skills. 
Now for time management, what should I do every day and every week to run and grow my online business? One, don't overwork yourself with a very long to-do list of things that you really don't need. <laughs> Hallelujah, preach it to stop. <laughs> I had days where I had 40 something things on my to-do list that I thought I needed to do. Oh my God. I didn't want to outsource anything. I didn't want help from anyone. I wanted to do it all myself. I still have tasks that I do myself, but I either bulk create the things that I don't want anything to touch mm. and leave everything else for later, or like I try to focus on only what really, really matters. Mm. So think of the things that you and only you and your business can do and focus on these. People don't care how pretty your website is. They care about the content. Yes. People don't care how pretty your social media image is. They care about the copy. They stop scoring for the copy with the pictures. Yes, of course, but the copy is what stops them first. Mm. And people don't care how many videos you produce every week. But if you produce one video a month and it still has a huge value for people, it's so much better than creating 52 videos a year, once every week, just to put yourself out there with content that you're not going to be happy with next year or the year after. Yeah. I did this a lot. I created a lot of videos for YouTube. I created a lot of episodic audio, somewhat like a podcast, but it's not, it's not a podcast. And I created them, put them up for about two or three months, archived them create them, put them up, then I'm not happy with them, and I aircraft them. Mm. I wasted a lot of energy doing that. Mm. Right now, I don't have that much, that many pieces of content on my website, but I'm happy with what I have up there. Yeah. And I don't care if people come scroll through my blog and see only four or five posts and say, whoa, she's not productive, she's not posting enough. Well, no, I do post enough for now because I'm too focused on my paid content mm. and on the people that I serve. Yes. Did you because hear that? <laughs> because if I focus on the people that I'm currently serving, that's going to get me even more qualified people to work with. And it's going to make my life easier. You have to say that better. again. Did, did the listeners hear that? Did the listeners hear that? <laughs> say that again, Kenz. Say that again. We focus on the consumer, on your clients. Yes. I serve the people who, are, who I'm currently working with instead of trying to find new ones right now. I do have automations running. I do have leads coming in, but still, my main focus every day is to serve my current audience mm -hmm. and then see how can I serve them further. And if anyone joins my current audience, they get to benefit from that and so on. Exactly. And instead of leaving my audience because they just paid me, now I don't need you guys. I'm going to find new people to pay me. Love it. Work that way. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is such an important topic. Damn, I could speak about that one all the time. <laughs> but we're going on to topic number two, content. What should I create for my blog? and social media every month. Okay, here's another fun thing. <laughs> I thought video is the king. Mm. And then I thought, but I'm too lazy to get the camera out and the light out and set up the tripod and write the script. And oh, I really need to sleep, I need coffee. And then I said, okay, no video. It's okay, we bought the fancy camera for maybe Disneyland trips or something later in dream list. But for now, maybe I can try to use the audio content. Mm. I don't have time for audio editing. Let me do pictures. Here's the thing. Try to find the easiest thing, the thing that feels most effortless to you. Yeah. With time and with creating a lot of courses, I knew I enjoy sitting in front of my microphone and talking to people. I created... A video that's not actually a video. You know where there are videos that are podcast videos? Yes. Where there's audio and then the sound wave moving on the yes. screen? Yes. These are my absolute favorite for now. One, because I don't have to get ready and you, you don't know how many layers I'm wearing right now because of that hijab. So in order to get ready, sit in front of the camera, put the lights on, and then once I start recording, either my son wants to eat something, bring something, or want me to help them with homework or something, or maybe my husband wants me to do something, or somebody calls me on the phone, like, guys, I'm trying to work here. <laughs> but <laughs> but if, I, if I take my microphone, even like with whatever I'm wearing, however I'm sitting, wherever I am, and I just talk to it, I feel it's easier. Exactly. Sometimes I don't even have time for audio. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and I'm responsible for the entire house. I don't have house help yet. Uh <laughs> yes, please, amen. I'd like that too. 
<laughs> so even though I don't have time to create audio, I simply create photos. Mm. Just write something from the heart. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't need to be 2,000 words of blog post to be a good blog post. You can tell people something in 300 words and it's still worthwhile. Yeah. So I know that most people, because I did this, I was guilty of this for a long time. People tend to try to over deliver in the quantity of the content instead of the quality of the content. Yeah. You can have I'm guilty one, of that. <laughs> <laughs> all of us, seriously. Even now, even after learning everything I've learned, I still make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. So it, this is good when, um, this is a reminder that you need to adjust your mindset every once in a while. Mm -hmm. See what's working and serving you and what's not. Mm -hmm. So now I uh, try to, you can have just one piece of content, like a webinar, for example. You can have a webinar done right. And it can be a better tool than a hundred blog posts. Yeah. Or you can have a blog post that's 500 words or something and you're saying your honest opinion, your genuine self, and it can convert so much better than all the other posts you posted. Yeah. So I'll focus on creating in the way that feels most effortless to you. Now, when I'm doing things that are more effortless for me, how am I, for the third thing, how am I saving time and enjoying my life at the same time? Tools, baby. Tools. <laughs> I am so geeky when it comes to tools that make my life easier mm. so i'm always on the hunt for new softwares to try if something is going to save me like 10 minutes a day i'm buying it that's the, <laughs> that's no question i don't care how much i spend because it's so good when you have something so huge and big and you find like one or two maybe three tools mm. that can get you something other people could do in six hours it should be in an hour yeah. There, you save five hours. Love that. And sometimes you don't have enough budget to outsource everything. Yeah. So if you invest in a tool that can help you for now, get the result even, you know, it, it might not be as super professional as someone else does it because I believe everyone have their own magic. So me creating a graphic is not like a graphic designer creating a graphic. Me trying to DIY my logo is not like hiring a designer to actually design the logo for me. Mm. But some people can be very tight on budget and very, I don't want to say pessimistic, but they don't think that they're going to get the money soon. And maybe they're still testing things out and don't know if they're going to make money out of all of this. Mm -hmm. So they tend to be a little cautious. Yeah. So yeah. investing in little pieces of software that can actually help you do things faster and save you time can be a good solution too. So Love it's for budget saving and time saving. Mm -hmm. And you have no idea. Like I have my best friend. She's also a business owner. And when she sees me, when she sees any new deal on a software, she directly sends it to me. Hey, take a look at that. Because she knows, to me, this is, this is better than shoe sale. It's like <laughs> Let's put that out there. Every time you get an email from AppSumo, it's like, oh, God, what have they got now? I don't even know if I should be looking. No, no. <laughs> but now the I check thing. every deal on AppSumo, <laughs> like every deal in details. What are you I doing? How are you going to offer me? Yeah, exactly. Is this going to save me? Like, come on. Is this going to save me? That's important. And the last thing, skills. How can I learn the right skills to keep my business running and growing? And of course, making money smoothly. When it comes to skills, the thing that you need to do is to grab a pen and paper mm -hmm. and write down all the tasks that your business needs mm -hmm. in like yeah. columns. So I need content, I need promotion, I need sales pages, I need speech pages, I need to create freebies and graphics and things like that. Yeah. And then in each area, I ask myself, is this really my thing or can I outsource this or try to find a tool for this first? Uh, on a scale of one to 10, how would I grade myself at this? So mm -hmm. if I'm a three at graphic design, then I need to find a course to teach me how to be better with graphics, like learn how to do things on Canva, for example, or something similar to Canva for now until I have enough funds to outsource that yeah. and so on. So you grade yourself in each area in your business. And then after you give yourself grades and everything, ask yourself, which one is, if I learned more about and I'd be better at, it's going to make my life easier in the other areas. Mm. Yeah. So which one is going to help me get better in the other places faster? So for example, if I'm weak in graphic design and weak in video production, and I'm weak in content creation and content writing or something, then I would focus first on the content because then when I know how to structure good content, I can easily create the photos and the videos. I can see them in my head. 
Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, from the logic. So it's kind of, it's kind of like an assessment. You give mm-hmm. yourself grades for everything that your business needs and focus on the needs, not the looks. Yeah. Now, not how you want your business to look in front of people. Mm. People care about the things we don't think they care about. Yeah, <laughs> we exactly. Think care about, we think they care about the profile photo, the headshot, the website, main page, the things like that. People are here for the content. All websites are pretty and beautiful, but most of them are exactly the same to people. They don't care about the colors you're using. They care about the content you have there. They want their questions answered. It's consumer psychology. I want my questions answered. I'm in a consumer buying decision. And in that consumer, that phase that I'm in, I'm looking for questions answered. So where are you, are you answering my questions? And what supports it is your branding. But your branding isn't the first thing. Because you can go and bear a lot of pretty sites, but it's like a CV. Or you're just scrolling through and you're kind of like, oh, I didn't find what I was looking for because my questions weren't answered. So the more you answer the questions for the consumer, the better your website, the better everything I'm, works together. I'm not saying just for not to, for anyone not to get me wrong. I'm not saying that these things aren't important. Yeah. It's just they're not the main priority. That's it. Focus on the content that's going to go into the website first or into the, the sales page or into the course first. And then the other things are going to complement it to showcase it in the right way for people. Yeah. Exactly. Like you were saying with the columns, you know, you've got the content, the graphics and the video. What's from those three things, the important skill to do first, which is the content, because then everything else will come from it. So for your website, when you're scrolling, you need to answer the questions and then all the branding and everything that supports it will come with that as well. Exactly. And how am I going to create a good video if I can't structure the content inside it right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's very, very important is the assessment and for the listeners to do that, you know, go and write down those things, go and write down the things and assess for yourself in columns or in a triangle or in, you know, from top to bottom, however it is, however you see things, assess where are your strengths at the top and where are your weaknesses. And strengths and weaknesses is not a bad thing. Okay. So don't think that your weakness is a bad thing because you can always turn a weakness into a strength. But go and assess the things that you wanting to put into perspective, like the content, like Ken's was saying, and work on that first because then everything else will fall into place as opposed to wasting so much time like six hours, which is the first point, wasting so much time on creating a graphic where you don't even have the content yet. So work on those things over there. So Ken's in closing, because we could talk forever. People, oh, yeah. this, this could go on forever. So in closing, I ask all my guests the two questions. One of them being, how do you want to change or challenge the world doing what you do? I want to help a million people learn skills that can actually get them paid while they still are themselves, Mm. their normal everyday selves. They don't have to pretend to be someone else. They don't have to try to look a certain way or talk in a certain way just to impress people. Just the way they are, just with their normal lives, they still get to enjoy the normal life and get paid by simple skills. Like if they already have one, they could leverage it in the most amazing way possible. And if they don't have any skills, I would love to teach them because it can take them and move them forward in life. I believe that a person like me didn't have enough chances. Like who am I to have a worldwide business and run from my house? People in my community, not all of them actually understand what I do. So to be able to reach the world while you're still where you are and you're living how you are, it's mesmerizing for me. And I want people to feel the same. I want normal people, average people, the people that you and me know, every, everyday people, to know that they have a chance to actually impact the world just by learning a few simple skills. They don't have to change everything about themselves and their lives and, mm-hmm. and be so super fancy and everything just to be successful. They can be successful the way they are. I love that. I love that. My mind's going racing. Anyway. <laughs> so... My last question is, I'd like you to fill in the blanks of three of my five values, top values. So passion for you is? Being able to inspire people. Mm -hmm. Wisdom for you is? Always remembering where you came from to know where you're going. Mm, Love that. And creativity for you is? Always have something fun to do. Don't be (laughs) too serious. (laughs) Yes! I love that. That's one of my, my values is humor and imagination. 
because we both are animation fans. Yay! Yeah, never, never, ever stop watching cartoon movies and animation movies <laughs> ever. <laughs> If you're like 90 or 100, don't, don't do it. <laughs> exactly. Ken, thank you so much for being with us here and going through your awesomeness, your princess status, going on to queen, never mind uh, the princess status. You know, how much you care for your community, how much you care for what you do and how you teach and how you put it together. And for me, when you were talking about how you want to change or challenge the world, it's really, you know, speaking to the underdogs not the ones that are, you know, the working class that are really feeling like that they're the underdog and not the top dog and that they're not good enough and that they can use what they have right now in order to make an impact for themselves and for their surroundings and for the world in their own small way. And it takes one leader, one creative visionary such as you to actually see that and then implement it and put it into the world and go, I believe in you. All you need to do is just take this and you'll see this as well. Thank you so much for honoring your gifts and your talents and for going forth strong. Thank you very much. So enjoyable talking to you and it feels like it's not even real. Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> oh, it was awesome. I know we'll probably meet live in real person sometime soon and you can find out more about Ken's in the show notes, her favorite book, her favorite quote, where she is on social media, on Udemy, of course, where you can find her on a website and her membership, and you can find out more information about it. Thank you so much, Ken, for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Awesome. And for the listeners, I'll see you next week. And remember to be fast and furious and be the change that you want to see in the world. Love you lots. Bye-bye. Dang, that was just super califragilisticexpialidocious. I enjoyed having you on board and please do me and you a favor. Head on over to iTunes, SoundCloud or Stitcher. Click subscribe and a super bonus. Leave your review and you stand a chance of being announced and advertised on the show. I'm always striving to ensure that your brand is uplifted and empowered. Remember, done is better than perfect. So be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and send in your feedback too. You're the absolute best. Keep rocking.